Hey guys, my name is Massimo, and today I want to take a look at the new Dustline DLC for Rainbow Six Siege. In general, I love what they've done with this update. The two new operators are a hell of a lot of fun, I like what they've done to the lighting effects, all the subtle small tweaks that they made along the way are a great step in the right direction, but the first thing I wanted to talk about is Blackbeard. I feel like this guy might be a little bit overpowered. Now I know, I know, you're probably thinking, wow, the DLC just released, don't be a scrub, you have no idea what you're talking about, at least give it a couple of days before, before you form an assessment on this guy. And I completely understand that viewpoint. In a couple of days, I might change my stance, but right now, I just, I don't, I don't know how this guy isn't gonna be one of the best operators in Rainbow Six Siege. If you know what you're doing, or at least halfway decent, uh, this guy is a nightmare to fight against. If you're not aware, the way that this guy works is that he can place a shield at the end of his assault rifle. If this sounds incredible, it's, it's because it is. Essentially, he has a massive advantage over everyone else because he just wins firefights. You can't get a headshot against him, he of course can get a headshot against you, and so he's gonna win those firefights a majority of the time. To make matters even worse, as soon as he gets behind a barrier, as soon as he gets behind a low wall or peers through a window, you can't see his body anymore, his shield blocks his face, and so he becomes an immortal god with an assault rifle. Trying to kill this guy in a 1v1 fight where he knows where you're located feels impossible. It is a nightmare right now. Maybe I'm missing something, maybe there's some strategy that I'm just not aware of, but the many hours that I've played the game so far, this guy is simply amazing because as long as he's playing it smart and he's behind a barrier and he's taking advantage of that shield, he is going to destroy you and your team. Uh, the one caveat to this is that if you do put enough rounds into it, it will eventually break. I'm not exactly sure how many rounds you need to land on that shield. I'm sure it depends on what weapon that you're using, but the rumor is right now is that if you put about an entire magazine into that shield, that it will eventually shatter. Now, while that is sort of a counter to it, in most situations, it's not gonna have that much of an impact because either he's killed your entire team by the time that shield has shattered, he's killed you, or he's just a terrible player and it doesn't matter what operator he's playing as because he's gonna be useless regardless. And so just in general, as I said, this guy seems a little bit too good right now. Uh, maybe I need to put more hours into the Dustline DLC to figure out how to counter him. Maybe when I put more time in, I won't have the same opinion. Uh, but at least for my first impressions, this guy is a top tier operator and you're gonna see him all the time in the future because there's really no reason not to play this guy on offense. Uh, moving on over to Valkyrie, she is amazing for all of the right reasons. Uh, one of the things that I loved about Rainbow Six Siege when it first released is that very few people knew where cameras were located and of course they never shot them out. And so if you were on defense and you could take advantage of those cameras, you could perform some pretty impressive flanks off on the enemy and catch them by surprise because you knew exactly where they were. Sadly, or predictably, now everyone knows their locations, they shoot them out, and so when you're on defense, yeah, it kind of gives you a general idea of where the enemy is coming from, but you're not able to really take advantage of those cameras anymore, at least like you could at the beginning of Rainbow Six Siege. That is no longer the case. I have not had this much fun on defense in a very long time, and it's all due in part because of her four cameras. You can throw these cameras on the ceiling, you can throw them on walls, you can even throw them outside the arena if you so desire to figure out where they're repelling from, and as long as you take advantage of them, you are going to be heavily rewarded. Now, the one downside of her is that she is easily countered by IQ, but in my opinion, and that's actually a good thing, because it means that IQ is finally a viable operator. When I was playing as IQ for the last couple of hours, I actually felt like I was contributing to my team through my gadget. That is not a sensation that I have ever felt with this operator, and it feels glorious. And so just in general, I love the addition of Valkyrie into Rainbow Six Siege. Not only because it gives a buff to IQ, but also just because she's a hell of a lot of fun. The cameras are really cool, she has access to the MPX, which is one of my favorite guns in any video game. A lot of you guys know that, it's got a high rate of fire. Sadly, it doesn't have the ACOG scope, but I'm assuming that's for balancing reasons. It's very, very accurate, and so just in general, she is the complete package and she has quickly become one of my favorite defending operators. Uh, as for the new map, I wish I could give you a better idea if it's any good or not, but admittedly, even though I've put hours upon hours into this DLC so far, 
I've only gotten it a couple of times. I will say that I love how destructive it is. This is one of the most destructible maps that we've gotten in the game, and I also like it that it's more on the smaller scale compared to the other maps. This is not a yacht that's massive, hard to learn, that has a lot of flanking routes and a lot of cubby holes. This is much more manageable, and I really appreciated that they went down that path instead of giving us another behemoth to learn. Uh, another thing I've really appreciated is what they've done to the customization. First of all, being able to customize your loadout for your operators in the middle of a round is a godsend, and I've already taken advantage of it. We switched it over to a map that had more long range lines of sight, and it just made sense, and it was great that I could switch on over to an ACOG scope instead of designating each of my guns for, okay, this one's gonna have ACOG, this one's gonna be for maps that are much larger, and this one's gonna be for more close quarter combat. It's nice that I just have the option now to finally customize on the fly, which is how it should have been at the release of the game. Uh, another thing I really like is that they have finally distinguished the role between the compensator and the flash hider. A lot of people had no idea what the difference was because if you looked at the graph at the bottom right hand side of the screen when you were customizing your weapon, uh, the recoil of the flash hider seemed to actually reduce it more than the compensator even though the compensator flat out said that it was designated to reducing recoil while the flash hider didn't at all. It just didn't make any sense. And so now when you make this, when you make these choices, the flash hider is going to be for players who are tap firing more. It's going to reduce your initial recoil, that first bullet, and while the Compensator is going to make it easier to control recoil for sustained automatic fire. I don't know which one's going to be better, I don't know which one is going to suit you, but I would recommend kind of testing them out, trying them out on all your different weapons, and seeing which one suits your playstyle more, because apparently there is now a clear distinction. Uh, but overall, if you can't tell, I am thoroughly enjoying this new DLC. There's been a lot of small, subtle changes that I've really appreciated. The lighting effect changes has been nice, so it's much easier to look in and outside of windows. It doesn't blind you or doesn't look like you're staring into the abyss. That's nice. The subtle balance changes to all of the operators has been fantastic. And so while it probably will take a couple of weeks before we get a true grasp of how the meta has changed, I'm having a lot of fun. This has breathed a breath of fresh air into the game for me, and so I am thoroughly enjoying the Dustline DLC. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Give me your thoughts on the DLC. Are you enjoying it as much as I am? Do you also agree that Blackbeard might be a little bit too good? In my opinion, one way that they could reduce his power and make sure that he's not blatantly overpowered is either to require less bullets to shatter that shield, maybe drop it down to like 10, that still seems reasonable. Those 10 bullets probably would have shot him in the face regardless, so that seems like that would be a better way at handling it. Or maybe make it so that when he does get shot, that uh, the shield cracks so much that it becomes very, very hard to figure out what's in front of him. And so he'll still have the protection, but it'll also be much more difficult for him to require or acquire his target. So that would be another way at balancing him out. But let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.